Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the review of the Serie A weekend. Uh, Serie A weekend that despite me wearing Roma and actually being happy that Roma uh, won for a change, I cannot shake this feeling that the refs actually really moved the league towards the Nerazzurri from Inter. Uh, in both of the big games, Atalanta Roma as well as Milan Napoli, there were some, uh, shall I say, questionable offside decisions that, yeah, if they would have gotten uh, gone differently, we still would have a very tight league right now, Inter. And to be fair, it's not only the refs, Inter are at the moment the very best team in Italy. And it's quite impressive what they're doing. But I think those two two decisions uh, kind of shifted things towards Inter in many ways. Uh, it was kind of a weird round for me because, I mean, there were two big games. There's a two, big, uh, two big games that I uh, watched, but I didn't really have um, much chance to watch anything else. So, yeah, um, I would say we'll go through it. I mean, uh, the round started with a, uh, a thumping 5-0 win of Inter at Salernitana. At this point, you know, the pressure was on for the race to keep up. And yeah, Atalanta Roma, it was, I mean, for most of the first half, a carbon copy of Atalanta against Villarreal. Roma scores early, Tammy Abraham or in the first minute, uh, just very bullish uh, going towards to goal, puts it in. And then Roma actually for once could sit back and let Atalanta come. And Atalanta didn't really, uh, either were too patient or didn't really find the means to uh, move uh, through the defense of Roma. And then it was Zaniolo uh, who in a conjunction with uh, Veretu very, very nicely uh, created the second goal in the 27th minute. And 2-0 up, you actually really thought that Roma are cruising. And there were more um, counter-attacks that maybe a little bit more uh composure roma could have finished however atalanta um and gasperini re realized it needs a whole lot of punch and already in the 34th minute he took jim city off and brought muriel on uh that was a clear sign and it took a while but atalanta increased the pressure and just before the half a muriel shot is uh deflected by uh cristante in, into the goal more or less game on at that point I would not be amiss, before I go to the second half, to tell, of course, the story of the Christmas uh, jersey of Atalanta, uh, which actually had a very nice design in blue and black, nice uh, stripes, and then the skyline, uh, supposedly, of, Ge of Bergamo on the bottom. The problem is the skyline on the bottom was not Bergamo, but a mirrored image of Torino, Turin. And the ultras didn't like that one bit. What a blunder. And then in both statements, I mean, uh, if you research in both states, it says uh, club and Homer said, no, 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 uh, we all, I mean, the, the skyline can be seen from different purpose, uh, perspectives and this is not, a, it's, still Ber 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 it's still Bergamo when there's a stock image of the Torino skyline that is just mirrored on the jersey. An absolute blunder and apology should be issued. And yeah, so for Atalanta, the game was already not uh, under a very good star. Uh, second half, Atalanta really ramped up the pressure and they got the equalizer in 68 minutes through Zapata. Or oh, everyone thought so. Uh, when you look at the goal multiple times, you think everything's all right. And then there is, I think it was Palomino standing on the side and just putting a hand on a Roma player. And he's offside because the goalie comes out. But he takes no part in the play. I don't think he's interfering with the player. Don't get me wrong. Roma, number two team in Italy for me. I wanted Roma to win this one. There is no doubt, doubt about that. But when I saw that goal, I could not believe that this didn't that this was called back. It it it, it is a phantom offside. I don't know how they came up with that offside rule. Now, I should have taken a big note because for the, the other game. Uh, that they will talk about we had something very 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 similar but uh, a staggering decision and then four minutes later a uh, free kick from Bavera 2 and Smalling makes it uh, 2 1 and Tim Abraham makes the second goal and becomes only the second uh, uh, or oh, becomes the first Englishman since the 90s I think it was David Platt to score two goals in a Serie A match so yeah three Englishmen English power overpowering Atalanta 
giving Roma a much need win and Mourinho a little bit of a relief. Uh, you were also, also, also going to win at Bologna in the fog. Um, Morata, an early lead, and that made Juve play easier. Uh, in the second half, uh, they doubled uh, the lead by Quadrado and played home rather safely. The early game on Sunday is one that I a little bit regret missing, just because just the, highlight are, ha, ha, the highlights of this one is already a loads of fun. Fiorentina have them wasting tons of chances. However, the goals, is like they say, the goals you don't uh, score, you end up con conceding. It's exactly what happened against Salsasolo Scamacca uh, in the 32nd and Frates in the 37th. A really weird goal, a ping pong goal where it just falls uh, in front of Fratesi and... Uh, nah, that was actually the other Fiorentina goal. <laughs> Whatever. I'm getting the thing, thing but that was a 2 deal for, for Sassuolo that even then uh, angry attacks by Fiorentina, they should have scored at least one. I mean, they had the chance to score three in the first half. However, they really... Uh, incessant attacking and then Vlahovic pulls the back in the 51st and then the Torreira goal that's the one that I wear uh, the Sassuolo defender I mean uh, multiple shots and then ping pong it goes to Torreira 61st 2-2 ample of time to get the winner I mean the momentum was squarely with Fiorentina with, 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 you know, at the point however a rather unnecessary tackle by Biragi in the 68th red card and then it swings back to Sassuolo and ends up being a 2-2, but a very entertaining game. And that leads us with the last game, the big one, Milan-Napoli. Now, going in, in, in this game, I know Milan at home against Na Napoli always had the trouble. I only remember a cup win uh, re recently under Gattuso um, that did well. But other than that, Milan has not done very well at home against Napoli. And they started, and why are they playing in black? Again, I, I'm, I'm getting a little bit annoyed. Maybe the squad thinks they play black, bad in the black jerseys or something like that. I mean, I'm getting really, really annoyed that they are overplaying them at home. But be that how it may, they really looked awful in the first 20 minutes, especially defensively. They could not get a grip uh, of, Na of, of Napoli and give up a very cheap corner kick. It's a short corner kick by Bezielinski. Vertonale is it Elmas? And then let's Elmas go, who doesn't even have to jump far, and it goes into the net. Um, and I think for the next 15 to 20, 20 minutes, Milan was lucky to not concede more. However, they consolidated themselves, but were sloppy going, going, going forward. And it was mostly that whenever there was a good at, uh, attacking move, there was usually an offside call. It was usually Ibra being offside. Ibra, I think, is feeling a little bit that he has played way too many minutes uh, as, as of late. And I think the big problem for Milan... Um, I think Milan is pretty much where they belong. Uh, it's not that they, you know, uh, they were maybe overperforming at, at the beginning of the season. Now they're a little bit uh, worse. But overall, I think Milan is, are exactly where they should, should belong. I think a title a run, while everyone, including me, would be very excited about it, um, it's not really in the cards. Let's uh, be fair on that. Uh, however, you know, having no Calabria and having no Leao takes out so much speed and uh, still having the COVID effects on the uh, Brahim and also Theo Hernandez, who again was, was out and then having uh, Simon Kier uh, out. That's a huge hole. Yes, Napoli also had many important players missing, Oziman and Koulibaly. So it was kind of the, I mean, Milan and Napoli more or less go hand in hand in this season in many, many ways. But I said that, I, I thought that especially then towards the end of the first, first seven, and mostly the second half, Milan had the game largely under control. There was a short period, midway through the second half, when there were uh, changes made. I think especially when Lobotka came on, uh, and Ulas, and then Politano. I, I really thought that at that, that point, then um, suddenly Napoli had more more, more control of the game. But uh, then the last 10, 15 minutes, Milan had an enormous amount of pressure, but was rather inaccurate. Ibra never in the right position. Messias was first uh, shooting a lot and being active. But, you know, as soon as then Giroud came in, and uh, it, it just didn't work out quite all that well. Having said that, they scored the equalizer. And it, I felt, I mean, yes, I'm a fan. I can see that some said that Napoli was the bad, but the team probably deserved the win. I'm fine with that. I had the feeling that at that, at that point, the equalizer uh, was a matter of time and should have happened. I think a draw in, for, for me would, would have been fair. But again, uh, rare, 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 rare,
from you know uh, pressure in the box uh, you know Giroud goal goes down ball goes on a few stations to Cassie who yanks it into the net and a great celebration is everywhere and I thought yeah at least a point yes uh, not enough but you know at least a point you uh, avoid Napoli overtaking you still in second place and then the referee calls the goal off for an offside call that I still don't get Giroud is lying on the floor yes with the furthest is his head it's close to the goal and by the letter of the law I see yes this is an offside position the problem is he doesn't interfere with the play there is uh, Juan Jesus is or uh, Jesus whatever I mean <laughs> that was another fun, fun, fun thing the game had, had, had Messiahs and uh, Jesus in there but in any case uh, very very Christmassy in any, any case, the defender is lying on Giroud. Giroud is not doing anything. He's not even trying to get to the to do the ball. It's the, the Jesus playing the ball. At that moment, this is a passive offside. Just because there's contact doesn't make him onside. I this is a one of the, the most ridiculous offside decisions I've ever seen, and it really really broke my mood. Uh, it was to, 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 to the point we, my wife was hugging me for the last 10 minutes. We were hugging on, on, the, on the couch while watching the game. And I got just so irate. I said, cutie, please. Ah, I'm enraged. <laughs> I cannot do this now. <laughs> it, ah, calm down again. But um, yeah, this was a robbery. This was absolute ro robbery. Yes, if that goal would have stood, Inter still would have a three-point lead and not a one-point lead. But still, uh, absolutely crazy. And as I said, I felt that draw was the deserved result. But yeah, so uh, Inter ahead. Uh, it's not quite halfway of the season yet. But Inter now four points clear. Napoli, Milan uh, level on points. Napoli uh, ahead because of head-to-head -head and goal difference. Both are in favor. And yeah, at, the, at this moment, it's hard to see anyone but Inter winning this uh title and roma fiorentina juve kind of also da, da, da. now it also has has to has said that after the derby there was um uh, i think milan had a seven milan napoli had a seven point lead on inter now it's a four point deficit it's an 11 point swing that's huge and this is why i think that inter at the moment are uh, playing unfortunately in a different league than the rest of the league and um are deservedly up there i i just gotta go it's great it just gotta, gotta be said uh we have a midweek round before christmas um with a uh, genuine atalanta for instance uh that atalanta definitely have to bounce back um i think the uh, interesting was of course uh verona against Fior, i guess fiorentina inter i'm looking uh inter playing torino at home that should be an easy win i, I would think Empoli against Milan uh, is a game that I'm a little bit uh, some tra tra trepidation on my part. Sassuolo Bologna is a local derby, so just a few things. I don't think it's the greatest of rounds. I probably will only watch uh, Empoli Milan, although Verona Fiorentina looks like a game that sounds like fun as well. In any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Please drop any comment below what you thought about those offside decisions. And yeah, uh, if you agree or disagree with me on any, anything, um, subscribe to my channel, see more videos like this, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.